And yet another favorite of mine is the scratch pad. Now, I don't know of any other DAW that actually implemented anything like this, but uh, you guys would know better than me for those of you that use other DAWs. But for Studio One, I think this is an incredible feature. So uh, if you watch the Arranger Track video, um, you could uh, you can go back and you can hear me actually refer to using the arranger track also with the scratch pad. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you some of the basics on using the scratch pad, and then I'll do a little exploration there on using the arranger with it. So uh, you have your song here, and you have everything paced out. This is the same song I used in that video, only I've done a couple of different things here. If I highlight all of the events, you can see that I've actually cut them up into their sections so I can show you two ways to use the scratch pad so here we go if I go up here let's see to this little icon right here you guys can see if I click on that it opens up another section of studio one and makes it active or in focus how do you tell if it's active or in focus if you click and the numbers turn white and the numbers in the previous section go gray, that's in focus. If I click on the ruler in this here, this is in focus. It's important to remember that when you do your mix downs, if your scratch pad is in focus, the mix down will only mix down what's in the scratch pad. If your original version is in focus, the mix down will only mix down what is in that version. And you can have multiple scratch pads in a long list, and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so now what, what would I use the scratch pad for? Well, you uh, if you remember in the last video, I have this song with all these different parts. So for this version, what I've done is I've divided the song into its parts by actually using the cut tool to create the different areas. So this whole area is whatever I want to call it eventually, the verse, the bridge, or the chorus. This whole area is another section, and so is this. So let's say I wanted to just experiment with two sections. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and go up here. Let's open up the marker track and mark some of these. All right, so let's see. I have a marker. I'm going to use this for the start marker. And then let's see. I have this section here. If I put the cursor here and I hit the plus sign, there's another marker. And if I go here and I put the cursor here, here's another marker. And I can do this here. If you guys, again, were with me in the Arranger Track video, you can create these with the Arranger Zones. But I don't want to go there yet. I just want to do this manually, the way most of you actually know how to do this. Now, let me do this real quick. Let me bring the end marker up in here, just like that. There we go. So now I have the end marker at the end of the section. So now, let's see, what section is this? This is my halftime intro. So I'm going to take and highlight all of these events, and I'm just going to drag over this way and put them right here in the scratch pad. So here is my halftime intro. So let me actually pick another. I don't want that one. All right, I want this one. This is kind of like a bridge or a break. And I think in the other video, I called it a chorus for a while. So if I go ahead and I take this and I bring this over here and put it at the end. And now all of a sudden, I now have a nice transition. Oops, I got to turn off the loop zone or stretch it out. All right, so now I actually want this part. I'm going to show you, I can't wait to show you how the Arranger track makes this a lot easier, but I just want to show you this way because this is how a lot of people are doing it. So here is this little section. I'm going to put this at the end here. Whoops. I want to go here. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit more. I can just turn it off, whichever I want to do. So you see what the scratch pad is allowing me to do. It's allowing me to take these different sections of my entire song and bring them over here in a different order. So now 
what are the advantages of using the arranger track instead of using markers and cut sections? Well, here, watch this. Well, now I'm going to undo all of this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave this and I'm going to make another scratch pad. So let's say add a scratch pad. So now I have two of them. So now if I go here, you see I have scratch pad one. And now I have this new empty one, scratch pad two. Isn't that cool? So let's go ahead and make our arranger tracks. Now, since I have the markers here, this is going to be really easy. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go to my, uh, my paint tool. And I'm just going to draw in the arranger sections according to the markers. And there we go. They're automatically labeled. I'm just going to leave the labeling the way that it is. So... In this case, now, the arranger track working with the scratch pad, it is even easier. You don't have to highlight different events and, and wonder if you're actually moving the right events and things like that. Once you have your arranger track, I'm going to go on a... I'm going to want to go ahead. I'm going to create a, uh, a version. <laughs> I'm having trouble here. I'm going to create a version with the chorus first. And uh, the verse next. And even the intro after that, just like this, and you can see how easy this is getting now. It's even even moving the markers over. Let's see, chorus, verse, intro, and then here's the bridge to go at the end. So now with the scratch pad, the really cool part about this, I can now experiment with it in this order. Now I can go ahead here and I can create another scratch pad. And now in this one, I want the bridge first. And then I want the chorus after that. And then I want the verse. And then I want the intro. And you can see everything is moving over. Once you have once you have the arranger track all set up, everything moves over in the proper order with everything numbered the way that it needs to be. So it is a very, very cool way of experimenting with different songs. I've got three versions of it here this one has to start with the bridge this one starts with the chorus and then of course this first one here didn't have any of that and you can see how the arranger track even helps with the scratch pads so now if i do like a particular version let's say i like the uh, third scratch pad. I like this order. I'm not going to do anything. I want to mix it down. I want to send it to my vocalist or whatever I'm going to do with it. Go ahead, get my loop zone all set for that there. And as long as this area is in focus, it becomes the main. So now a lot of people ask, well, once I actually pick the scratch pad I want, how do I, how do I put it back into the original area? Well, the thing is, you don't have to, because if you just move this whole area over and this becomes your new main area to work. Remember, I said if the numbers are grayed out, then you know that that one is not in focus. This scratch pad is in focus. If I go ahead and I choose a different scratch pad, that's going to be in focus. Or I can move this all over. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. I can move this all over. Click here in this area. And now this is in focus. And if I go ahead and I mix down. Whoops, I moved that. Didn't want to. If I go ahead and mix down, it will only mix down this. If I have the scratch pad in focus, it will only mix down this. If I choose a different scratch pad and it's in focus, it will only mix down this. Now, of course, if you decide this is your final version and you don't even want any of this, here's what you can do. You can go ahead and delete, delete all of your markers, delete all of your events. And if you really want to have this in the original section, you can highlight, uh, click on the first arranger event, hold shift and then click on the last one. Oop, that doesn't work. You have to highlight them all like this. I forgot about that. Now I can drag them all over here, and now I have the whole song here, and then I can make this in focus, and then I can turn off the scratch pads completely. So if you want to do it that way, you can do it that way. You can see all of the markers come over. Of course, it keeps the markers in number order, so you have to watch out for that if you want to do that. 
I'm going to go ahead and move this to the start marker right there. There we go, just like that. So if you move your sections using the arranger track, whether you're working with the scratch pad or whether you're working with the uh, regular area here, your beginning area, the arranger track makes sure that everything stays in order. You can go ahead and highlight all your arranger zones. If you want to add a couple bars to the beginning to put a new intro, the arranger track makes that easy. But this was a video about scratch pads. So you see how easy it is and how easy it is to keep the different scratch pads in focus. Hope I didn't lose anybody on that. I get really excited when I go through this stuff because I make lots of scratch pads when I do my music and I like to test a bunch of different things. Now for me as a struggling vocalist, I have bunches of different vocal takes. And instead of using layers, I will even use the scratch pad for different vocal takes and just start moving them order over and uh, grabbing them from the layer tracks and bringing them over into the scratch pads. Lots of possibilities. So I'm going to stop right there because there is a couple more things that I can go through right clicking and seeing all of the different options that are available in the scratch pads. It is almost identical though. So you really don't have to worry about learning much more about it, but we'll do a couple other videos with a couple other ideas that I have. Hopefully you got something out of this and I didn't lose anybody uh, and I will see you all in the next video.